cliff and we're looking down into the into Burgundy here. So at the bottom of this cliff we have Saint Romain, you go further down the valley here, the Ossie Jures, and then Merceau over the back. A little bit round the corner you've got Volnay and then Pomard. Hi guys, Tiger's Winemaker here and thanks for watching our channel. So we're going to talk about five methods of cap management in Burgundy red wine production. So guys, if you like these videos, make sure you subscribe, but also hit the bell and that way it'll keep you up to date with the latest videos because uh, we've got loads more to come. Today we're talking about the five main techniques for cap management for red wine production. The first is pigeage by hand. The second is pigeage by foot. The third is a closed pump over. The fourth is an open pump over and the fifth is aeration. So guys, this might be a handy tool for anyone who's out there doing a Wesset course, or perhaps you're a SOM and you want to learn more about the production. Um, so we're just going to keep it basic here and go through each technique. Most red grape varieties that we work with in wine production have clear juice. Some of them do have red juice, but for the most part it's clear juice. So we want to extract as much colour as we can out of the skins, and we do this by cap management. So what we do is when the, the grapes are fermenting in the tank, what will happen is the carbon dioxide lifts those skins up to the top to the surface, creating a cap. So what we want to do is manage that cap and incorporate the skins and the seeds through the juice to incorporate the colour, the tannins and the flavours. So if what happens is, if uh, we don't do this enough, we'll end up with a light colour wine. And if we do it too much, we can over extract the ferment. Also, if we were to leave that cap as it was at the top, you can have microbial issues with different uh, microbes growth on the surface of the wine. First technique is pigeage. And this is where you have a special stick by hand and you get in and you ram. Sometimes people call this ramming or they call it punch down. And this is where you get in and you push the skins and the seeds below the surface of the wine or the juice. There's a second way you can do this. Uh, this is when you use your feet, and this is normally for smaller ferments. And you can get in there with your feet and push the skins and the seeds below the surface. This next technique that you can see here is called remontage. Uh, in English we call it pump over and it's basically where you hook up a pump and you pump from the base of the tank and over the top. So what this is is a gentle mixing of the juice or the wine across the cap of the or the surface of the ferment. Now the fourth technique is the variation on the pump over, which we use an open pump over. So here we open up a valve at the bottom of the tank and splash it into a container, and then from here pump over to the top of the cap. So what this does is it incorporates more oxygen into the ferment, uh, and that's essential for clean yeast growth. Um, you have to be careful when to use this technique because you want to be using oxygen at the right time. Now the fifth technique is a little bit more modern and this is where we inject compressed air into a ferment. So you can either use compressed air or you could either use food grade oxygen. So what we're doing here is pumping that uh, compressed air into the ferment and this is giving a good aeration of the ferment to support clean yeast growth. But what it actually does, it also turns the ferment over and gives it a good mix as well. Now more importantly than the cap management that we've talked about is the temperature of the must throughout the ferment. So we need to understand when it needs to be cool, when it needs to be warm, and that way we get the most extraction out of the must.
Now once the ferment is complete, and by this I mean all the sugars have been consumed by the yeast, Lucian decides whether he wants to have an extended maceration period for the ferment. So some of the batches that came through were a little bit light, so he left them on skins for longer just to try and increase the extraction, where others that had the perfect level of extraction, they were ready to press out. Uh, if you watch further videos, you'll see us pressing out these reds. So I was very fortunate to work with Lucian in his winery there. Uh, normally he does the work himself, but this was the first time he had an outside help coming to the winery, so I was stoked that he um, trusted me to work in there in the winery. So each morning he'd come in and we'd go through and taste the ferments, and he'd decide which one of these five techniques he'd give through for the ferments throughout the day. So each ferment was usually worked twice a day, once in the morning and then again after lunch. Um, and depending on where the, the stage of the ferment was, we'd decide which technique we'd use that day. So thanks for watching guys. Now make sure you subscribe because we've got loads more videos from Burgundy to come. If you've got any comments, just go down to the comments section below and hit us up and just leave a comment down there. Cheers. Yes, we are Australian. Oh, we are from Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, so we've just been doing the pump overs this morning. So some of the Bats here have got some really nice tannins and structures, so we've just given those a light pump over. The ones are a bit light on, we've got in there with the feet just to, for a bit more extraction out of the skins. And later on today we'll probably warm these up a little bit just to get the extraction out of these before we press them out next week. Okay. We've got a pomade here and it's a little bit light on, so we're just trying to work the skins a little bit. Leave you in there for a bit longer, a bit more maceration, just to try and get more structure and, and colour from it. <laughs>